Hello there, everyone. And here I am at The Hub once again, uh, coming to you with a Fueling Your Faith and doing that. Now, the cry that goes up from children across the universe who have brothers and sisters is, that's not fair. Something has happened, something is going on, something has uh, incited, raised the issue of it's not fair. And today, as we continue just this, this whole in-depth look at who God is, we come to the fact that God is just. You know, it says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, when uh, Moses is singing this wonderful rejoicing song, sort of like towards the end of his life, and he says this, he says, He is the rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. That is who God is. That is his, his very nature. That's the very fabric of his being. He is, by definition, just. That is who he is. He is the one who's fair. Now, you might look at the world around you and go, well, that's not fair, and that's not fair, and, and that's not fair. You might even want to argue with God and say, you're not being fair here. But the fact is, God is just. He is the very definition of just. And so we know that all decisions from him are good. Now, if we look at Matthew 12, 20, it says this, a very famous, very famous verse. It says, a bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not stuff out. There's the verses we love. Those are the verses as Christians bring us such comfort. But listen to this, it then says, till he leads justice to victory. Our God is a champion of justice a champion of justice. His, his kind of very nature is to bring justice. And we can look at this world in kind of its format at the moment within the context of our own lives of 80 years, 70 years, whatever, how many years it might be. And we can look at that and go, well, that's not fair. And that's not fair. And that doesn't seem right. Folks, God looks at all eternity and he knows that he is just and that justice will come about. Now, that's, that's a challenging one for us because when we're looking at this world and we think, well, hang on, is God inactive? No, 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 he is not. He is looking at the world and he is far more upset at injustice than we are. We are made in his image. And so when we get grumpy or upset at something that isn't just from the, the example of the, the bickering brother and sister all the way to world poverty or just the injustice of the haves and haves not of this world, we can think, oh my goodness, this seems so unfair. Why does somebody get away with something when that person doesn't get away with anything? You know, there's all those questions in red, but God looks at all those things and he, he is more upset than that. And we know this because he has given Jesus as the remedy for injustice. You know that verse it says talks about victory and bringing justice to victory. Well, when Jesus died on the cross, there was immense justice. We do not deserve anything. We deserve what Jesus got. But in this amazing turnaround, God gives us everything as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ's death on the cross, the glorious exchange, to such a point that we become transitioned from an accuser. And, and as you know, you read the Psalms, there's a lot of accusations go God's way in the Psalms. We go from that place into actually a place of being the people who can forgive on the back of this. So when injustice happens to us, our response is not to uh, get grumpy. Our response is to forgive. Let me just finish today by reading this. This is from Matthew 18. And this is Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35. It says this. If I can find the verse, Matthew 18, reverse a bit. <laughs> verses 21, 25. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master had ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had to be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. 
When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in and he said, you wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all of your debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Folks, fueling your faith this week is about getting rid of all the stuff that gets in your way. What we think about God defines us and will actually replicate what we see around us. So we will present God how we understand him. So when we understand that he's just, but in the context of that we are forgiven so much, then we know that we can then forgive others. So right now, I'm just gonna say, hey, ask God right now, Lord, is there anyone I need to forgive? Because that's just such a block to fueling your faith. If you've got someone, you need to forgive them. Write to them, pick up the phone, or just say out loud, I forgive that person. That's a great first step. Bless you guys, enjoy, and look forward to seeing you soon.